can we, Terry, go back because we haven't um, talked about your time in Grendon, and, and w- but we haven't also talked about your career as a as a as a. I feel rude saying criminal, but <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it is. Word, you know, isn't it? It is. You have to call it what it is, brother. Yeah. You know? What what was it like going on your first job? What what did you knock off that that give you a buzz? I suppose. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, as from a very early age, I was um, I was at grafting. I was at, uh, at nicking. Um, I think you know, the, you know, the first few I did was when I was about ten years old. You know, I can remember going down to the old aero shelters in, in Camden Town, and and they go all over London, and and I got a key to them and, and an XOR. And I went with a couple of my mates and we went around to every single uh, station. And and first there was an adventure. And then I, I noticed that on every single train station, there was a cigarette machine and, and a chocolate machine. So I then spent the next couple of months um, doing every every cigarette machine and every every chocolate machine. And I, and I had tons of cigarettes. That was a t- as a 10-year-old kid. I then was down at King's Cross on the train lines and a train came past with loads of cars. And uh, so, you know, I ran along and jumped on. And um, I opened the door, and, you know, and it was a long uh, transport for cars. It was about a mile long, or if not, if not longer. And I opened the door, and there was uh, all uh, car radios. So I jumped back off, and I and I got some black bags and, a, and another friend of mine, and we waited for a couple of days, and, and the next one came along really slow, and we ran along and we jumped on it, and I, he, he he got in and, and done all the radios and up, and I held the bag, and as as we filled up, we, we put it over the side. And we went about five or six miles down the track, but we had, I don't know, we had about 25 or 30 radios. And it was our biggest score as a young kid. I think they were worth £10 each. And that sort of infused me. Was, um, it, and a, I, was it a bummer mm-hmm. when they when they started putting the key code in the radios? Do you know what? You know, I, was, I was out of it by then, thank God. You know what the funny thing was? It's the same with the, 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 the wheel nuts. Remember the wheel nuts they put on cars? They said you can't yeah. nick the wheels. So, because they got this special wheel nut that you can only open it from the from the from the special thing they left in your car. Yes. So instead I... of nicking your so instead of nicking your your wheels out, they were breaking into the car, smashing it, and then to take this wheel nut off to fucking take the wheels off. So it was it was the same with the the new radios. You know, they put these new face off radios, and what did everyone do? They hide them under the seat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, it's just crazy. But but yeah, but for me. You know, I, I got a fair amount of enjoyment out of, of doing that as a kid, as a 10-year-old kid. I then went into care, and, and that was the consequence of me getting in trouble, nicking cars, breaking into shops. And there was a price to be paid for doing it as a kid. It cost me my whole life, you know, being a criminal at that stage. And I went into a home, I lost my family uh, because I was bunking off school, you know, pickpocketing down the West End um, and nicking handbags and everything I was doing. I was, such a, I was a bastard kid, I'm not going to lie. Um, I kept getting in trouble and kept getting in trouble, and then I went to the home. Um, I then graduated to um, to a community uh, to a community home, and I left there when I was 16 years old or 15 years old. And I met I met some older boys, and and they they encouraged me to do uh, sort of armed robberies. So we were doing we were doing uh, post offices and banks. I think 50 or 60 post offices in in the space of a couple of years. And then I got another sentence uh, four years in in a man's prison. Where do you? Um, where do you where do you get a shooter then to to go and do the do you just buy that on the black market? Yeah, you know you you know it, where I used to live was it was it was predominantly a, a, a villains area. You know, Camden Town, Kings Cross, Whitechapel, uh, the Angel was where armed robbers came from, drug dealers lived. You know, we were we were at our corner of London. You know, I could go into any pub, any club at the age of 15, 16, buy a small shotgun. You know, and as I got older, I could buy anything else, you know, which I won't go into. But, you know, anything up to a, to a you, know, you know, I could buy anything. But at that particular moment, you know, the, 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 end, the end thing was, was a, a snub-nosed uh, revolver and a sawn-off shotgun, which I bought. And then I went on a crime spree. Uh, I, was a big, I was a big kid. And, and um, with a balaclava, and I just started doing everything. It, just, you know, it, was, it was just uh, like taking candy from a baby. Um, um, would you have been prepared to shoot someone or is it just for the intimidation? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know what? It was definitely for intimidation. I would never intentionally hurt anybody, especially a security guard or someone who works in a post office or bank. You know, it's just not what you do. You know, you know, over the years, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. My dad was an armed robber. Um, him and him and his, his associates, they killed a security guard. Um, so I was always, when I went on, I actually, when I actually took the shotguns on the robberies, I actually took the bullets out. 
mm. which which was which was 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 unheard of. You know, even the guys I worked with said, "You got to put fucking shells in it." And I said, "No, I'm not." And why would I do that? Because if the guy grabs hold of the gun and I pull it by mistake, he's gonna die. So no, I never ever took any any ammo on there. Um, you know, but I, I actually I was quite successful. You know, I was actually I was actually quite successful as a robber. Um, unfortunately, I got caught. <laughs> a bit of a contradiction. So, uh, so tell us, then, Terry, because it's it, I don't know if it's just me or whether a lot of young men go through this fantasy, but you you always picture that perfect heist and you got this fucking big bag of money. And it's going to last you, but it doesn't work like that, does it? You you, you spend it quickly, and you know what's you know it's, you know yeah. The more you know, the more money you get, the more you spend. You know, I was, you know what most people were earning about two hundred two hundred pound a week then, and we were nicking like three and a half thousand pound a day. Uh, you know, I, I rented out a flat, I bought a nice car, um, I never had a license. <laughs> you know, and but you know what? There's a price to be paid. You know, I, I was going out every night, I was drinking, I was taking drugs, I was womanizing. And and eventually I walked home and I thought I was Charlie Big Potatoes and I opened my front door, um, and the, the whole the whole place came alive with police officers and they, they gave me a, a severe beating and then took me to um, I think it was Hendon um, at the Hendon unit robbery squad, you know and and then, you know, and then I got I got four years and then over that four years I, I was determined to come out of prison and change. Uh, I then got married uh, as soon as I as soon as I left prison. And, and everything was going all right. And then I, I, I sort of uh, had, a, had a breakdown with my girlfriend. She, she we left each other and broke up. And, uh, and I, I was doing the jump ups at the time. And I ended up going to Spain. And I was to try and get away from there. And then I ended up driving Puff from Marbella to Valencia. And, you know, I never had a care in the world. I didn't care if I got caught or spent time in a prison, in a, in a Spanish prison. I got so good at it that I was, I was actually doing it every other week. You know, I was buying it. You know, I started off with 50 key, 100 key, 200 key, and then I went up to 500 key every other week. And then I sent it back to, to, to my friends or my associates. And, and then I, well, I bought a big villa, nice cars, and I thought I'd cracked it. You know, and then I, I was working in Amsterdam. Uh, was this the puff was coming in from Morocco then, I'm guessing? Yeah, yeah, it was coming in from Morocco, yeah. And, and then one of my favourite films has got the business. Have you seen it with Danny Dyer? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, oh, you know, it's, it's a little bit like that actually. Yeah, we was yeah. living, we was living the life, taking cocaine and and just just womanizing and doing everything else. You know, it was it was very, you know, I can, I can remember being in, in Marbella and uh, you know, I can remember this guy, this guy coming coming down with a big sandwich board saying repent, 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 and come to Jesus. And we was a nouveau riche then, and and you know what? I look at that moment in time, and and I. When I talk to kids who want to, and I'm asking them to change their life or in gangs, I now know what they see. They see me with that sandwich board in Marbella trying to convert them. I know and sometimes how useless it can be, but I know that guy actually went out of his way to try and change people's lives. He may have planted the seed that day, and that's why I go out every day with my sandwich board, and I hope to plant the seed that some of these kids will change their lives. You know, so, yeah, so I, I, that always, that always uh, I can always remember him coming and I feel, you know, this guy's off, off, off key. He's crazy. Why would I? Why would I change my lifestyle and become become a, a you know one of God's disciples when I could I could sleep around, take drugs and drink, and do everything I want.